everybody. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to episode 52 of the Legacy Nets podcast. My name is Chelsea. My name is Sue. I'm the daughter. I'm the mother. Um, I'm coming to you from Burlington, Vermont. Burning, Connecticut. And that's our spiel. Uh, welcome to any new viewers. Thank you for coming and checking us out for the first time. Hopefully you enjoy it. This is a podcast about knitting, crafting, spinning, rug hooking, crocheting, pretty much fiber art as a whole. Um, and to all of our returning viewers, thank you for coming back and spending some time with us. We love, we love seeing your comments and knowing that you're there with us. Yes. And we do read every one of those comments. We really, we do. We do. I actually, I'm so excited because one of the comments last episode, I'm so excited because you know how we were talking about that pom-pom, like I have that brioche hat that I'm knitting and I'm like, how do I do that with the pom-pom? Like the most genius, I forget, I think her name was Elaine. Um, and she was taught, she was saying that if you put a button on the pom-pom and just leave a hole at the top, you can flip it inside out and backside in and just keep unbuttoning and rebuttoning. That was genius. And I had, that rings a bell with me. I feel like I have heard that and it's genius. Yeah. I feel like somebody has told me that in the past. And then when I read her comment, I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. 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 It is so helpful. It is funny because we do bring up a lot of things. And again, we, we are not the best at responding because it gets away from you. It just literally takes on a life of its own, but we really do read them all and we appreciate them all and take into consideration when we ask for opinions and all of that. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, love you guys. You guys are the best. Um, so what should we talk about first? I feel like we kind of have a lot to talk about. We have so much to talk about. Yes. Let's take the elephant out of the room. That was so clever. That was clever. It dawned on me as I looked over there. Okay, let's take the elephant out of the room to begin the podcast. Okay, elephant out of the room. Um, I did post it on Instagram. I, Justin and I are expecting our first baby. So that is some really exciting news that we have been keeping under wraps for a while. And it feels so good to get off, off of my chest and off of our chests and kind of rope you guys in now. Well, just because we've been, well, I've been knitting and I've been like, yeah, I haven't had time to knit. I haven't been knitting and I have been knitting, but I didn't want to share a thing. Yes. We'll talk about this later. We just needed it as a clever prompt. It is so cute. I love that elephant. I love it. So yes, it's amazing news. It's, it's, still, it's still like we've known for, I don't even know how long. You've known for probably about a month, I would say. Probably, I would say about a month. And it still keeps dawning on me. Like, oh my gosh. Like, it's so, it, it, it leaves me speechless. I know. It still doesn't feel real. And that's, I feel like that's the reason why we decided to wait for as long as we did. I think we kind of waited a standard amount of time. But uh, Especially with your first, I just feel like it just doesn't feel real for a while. Like I don't have, I've been so lucky. Like I haven't had any morning sickness, nothing. Like my appetite changed a little bit. Meats and vegetables were nauseating for the first two and a half months. Um, luckily, I just got my appetite back. So that's good. Um, and you'll get it back like tenfold. <laughs> Still waiting for that to happen, but I'm. Oh, you're gonna wish it didn't after a while. <laughs> no, I know oh, it is. Totally enjoy every second of that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but yeah, it's been relatively painless. Um, everything is good. We heard the heartbeat this morning, which was super exciting. We had our we had our first ultrasound um, a month ago now, just about a month ago, and it was so fun when we were. I was laying there and right at the very end, she was like, all right, like, here's your last little peek. We're all done. And we saw a little, a little arm waving. And I was like, oh my gosh, is that the baby? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. So we saw it wave at us. And Oh, it's so, it, it, there's no words. 
there's no words. It's just so exciting. And it's funny when you said this morning to me, we heard the heartbeat. I literally could go back 30 years and remember that experience. And I can still hear that. Like, it's just the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. Yeah. It's just amazing. And oh my gosh, so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Worth so, it. Um, so probably some questions. Uh, I'm due January 17th. So that'll be a fun way to like ring in the new year. I'll be probably just laying flat waiting. <laughs> no, if you're anything like me, you'll be in and out. I, I'm praying. <laughs> you will. Um, you're, you're in such amazing shape. That's what's going to make things so easy. Not, no, that's not even fair to say. Easy is not a word you would put with labor, but it will be so helpful. Yeah. So helpful for you. Yeah. I hope so. So, so yeah, and that's pretty much the big news. I mean, it, there's really, we can just end it with that. There's no better news in the whole wide world. That's it. So you and you're having the first in the, on both sides, you and Justin, both in both families. I know. I know. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. We have, I'm lucky enough to have a few great, I'm a great aunt. I had to think about who I am. So I have two, do you call them great nephews? What do I call them? I really don't know. Anyways, I have two nephews from one of my nieces. And oh my gosh, if anyone knows me, I love the, I love babies and I love kids, period. I don't, and at your age, dad and I were like, yeah, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. We didn't know. We were like, yeah, we will maybe. And I can tell you, I become mesmerized when I'm around any kids. Like, I find them fascinating, um, interesting, funny. I just love kids. Yeah. That's so, it's so funny because we were the same way. Like, even, like, going into marriage, we were like, I don't know. Like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, like, we won't be crushed. But something does change. And I was telling you this. Last year at Rhinebeck, something in me changed. And I think it was staying in a house full of mothers. And being the only one not being a mother and then just kind of I, I remember like as the weekend was going by thinking like like what would this experience be like if I did have a kid or like if if there was a child in, in the picture and like getting really excited about that prospect and I think yeah. well and don't you think because we stayed with Connie who has young kids and you could feel her the way she was missing her children I, I thought it was palpable and then we got to see, like we FaceTimed or she FaceTimed and then we'd peek in and, yeah. you know, her little Emma, I feel like I know her and then little Felix. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I get that because I could really feel that for her and remember those days of you love getting away. It's so amazing to be able to get away. But the minute you leave, you're like, you miss them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that is true. So we'll see. I mean, I definitely like everybody keeps saying we told our friends up here who have who just had their first child last November. So um, we told them probably about a week ago, maybe two weeks. Um, and she was like, just wait, you're not going to believe how much love you have for this little baby. And like and she said that she was like, you know, when I was pregnant, everybody told me that. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I'm going to love him. But like, you don't know until obviously they're here. Oh, Andy and I just had this discussion about like once you have children, like you're you're literally like the heartstrings for me are a real thing yeah. where like literally there's a pull on your heart. Yeah. It's it, and it never goes away. Like you guys are all full grown ass adults. Grown ass I would say. <laughs> and uh it's still there. It's still there. But you know what? Life for me would have been so empty without as much as sometimes you go, really, this hurts. Like it'd be so much easier if I didn't feel this way, but it's amazing. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. I keep thinking about you thinking like all of you guys, really, you're in the best time of your life right now. It's just the most amazing, hardest, most exhausting, everything, but the best, mm -hmm. absolute best. Yeah. So yeah. So 
We've got a lot of work to do with the baby coming. Let's just say that out loud. Yep. A lot of knitting. That's all that matters right now. It's like, holy cow, like everything I do, everything I think about is like, oh yeah, I got to make that. And I got to make that. Yeah. And once, once we get to show what we've done, I've already made. I made it the first weekend. <laughs> we told you one weekend and then you came up the following weekend, bought the yarn. No, we came up that week. Remember you were home on Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, we went to the concert. Then we joined you up there. I bought the yarn. Where did I get the yarn? Nito. Uh, nope, that was at Must Love Yarn. You got the yarn for the other thing at Nito. Yes, yes. Okay, and Must Love Yarn, the yarn, yes, now I'm totally remembering. The yarn is gorgeous, and by the time I got home from the weekend, it was done. The sweater and the hat? Or the hat? The hat maybe the next night. Well, I hear that's the best part about making baby things is that it's like, whip them off. Well, and typically I do not make um, newborn sweaters for people because if you're not a knitter, you don't quite get it and you might forget to put it on and it goes like newborn is like that. But you being a knitter, newborn, you'll get you'll get wear out of newborn. Oh my gosh, Jan in the middle of January? That's the beginning of the winter. I know. So you will have all winter with newborn sizes. So you're going to need a substantial amount. Oh yeah. Except I really think this one is a staple because of the color, the weight, everything about it. I feel like it's going to be the go-to. Well, and we already talked about it. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that that's what I'll bring. That's what we'll bring him or her home from the hospital. In. Hospital. I know that is the cool part, but that could change. You could you could make one that you go no I'd rather use this one but it doesn't matter because you've got a lot of days that you're gonna need sweaters a lot a lot should we show the sweater do it we've already talked about it okay so the only thing that isn't done is obviously we have no buttons because right. we don't know boy or girl and I have not Kitchenered stitched the underarms oh and I will say we are going to find out but we haven't found out yet for anybody that was wondering. Look at that yeah. sweater. Oh. Look at how little it is. Look at that. And what's the pattern? Okay, so this is the antler sweater by Tin Can Knits. I could make 5,397 of these and never get tired of it. It is not the tiniest size. I think I went, I can't remember. I think you did one above, so it was like, infant and then or like newborn like zero to three then six to twelve maybe it's uh, there are no words how freaking cute this is so i have to kitchen or stitch that together i should have done that but we hadn't really we weren't sure about when we were going to podcast mm -hmm. i have to weave in the ends i can't get enough of it so the colorway let's talk about this colorway it's beautiful. pearl malabrigo rios I forgot that Malabrigo Rios is one of my favorite worsted weight yarns. It's it's a superwash. Um, I, I, I could just like, I'm gonna be sad when this leaves my office because I look at it every day. <laughs> so the colorway is pearl and it takes on, it's very, it's very unusual. It takes on a gray look sometimes, but it's really quite, pearly like a tanny gray is there such a thing as a tan i feel like that's brown and gray together but it's to die for okay i'm not done <laughs> oh the antler hat is so cute there are no words there are this is just the sweetest thing i've ever made it's so cute look at it oh. i'm sorry i really truly can't stand how wonderful this is it is so i'm go i have been looking up worsted weight booties because i have what i have a whole skein left i have a whole skein then then enough to make booties so i could make justin if it's a boy i could make justin a matching hat <laughs> he would probably love it he loves wearing your hats i think that's hysterical because he didn't for a while He's never really been a hat guy. And then he like, one day it just like clicked. Well, you also live in Vermont and it's cold in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So 
I am going to make a little pair of like real traditional baby booties because there's nothing like them. Um, but I want to use the same yarn so that if you choose to bring this little precious baby home from the hospital with these, he or she is going to be the luckiest baby in the whole entire world. As far as wearing knitted items, like, because I, when I became a knitter, I really was so sad that I hadn't been a knitter when you guys were little because what you would have had on your bodies. Although I have to admit, I couldn't have afforded to knit like this when you guys, I mean, having three little guys, no, that wouldn't have been happening. But now I can knit with whatever yarn I want. Oh. And you know what? Again, you being a knitter, I can knit with, like, you're willing to hand wash. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. you don't know, you really don't know any different. No. And I don't, yeah, I don't throw anything in the washing machine. Like, even if it is super washed, I mean, I'm sure I'll get to that point with baby knits, but like, I well, With certain things you will. Like, there will be certain things that you absolutely will and other things you won't. But, okay, we can stop talking about it now, but I'm going to still hold it for quite a while. That's okay. I love it. Oh, thank you so much for knitting that. I, I love it. So now I just want to, I, I'm kind of stuck. And you know me, I did not want to know the sex of my babies because that's what got me through deliveries, the, the excitement of not knowing. And like I said to you, oh my gosh, that's what got me through. I don't know if I would want to know. As the knitter looking on, it's going to be really helpful to know. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be really helpful to know because I can't seem to focus on colors. It's, it's really hard. It's hard. Although I've got, I still have stuff that I can't even show. I know. And I want to see it. No, you can't. Okay. So let's keep talking baby. Cause that's all I want to talk about. Oh, okay. Susan Claudino. No Knit Sherlock is a freaking genius. Mm -hmm. She's a genius. Like this, there's no ends. There was one at the end of the tail that I tucked in. That is insane that that is one piece. This, well, you knit it in pieces and then you knit them all together. Look at that. Look at that I-cord tail. I forgot his name. Fugal. I don't know. Is that the pattern name or that's what you named? The pattern name. Hold on. Okay, I got it. Oh, 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 it's such a mess. I'm dropping. <laughs> Google the baby elephant. It's a pay for pattern. It is worth every dime. I would pay, I'm not kidding you, I would have paid $10 for this pattern. That's how amazing it is. I didn't. I think it was... I feel like a lot of them are six. It might have been six, but I could be wrong. It is brilliant. It's so sweet. So what did I use, you ask? I know you didn't, but I know someone is going, tell us the yarn. It is Hedgehog fa Favors, Hedgehog Fibers, Worsted Single. It's a single. Do you remember the color? No. It looks like almost <coughs> genie. I have no idea. I bought it to make a hat mm -hmm. and this is what, no, this wasn't, no, I bought this to make this because I fell in love with this pattern like a year ago and I wanted to make it. The cool part is I could probably make two more. I have one other thing I need to do with this, but I think I still have enough to make another elephant. Oh my God. It is so stinking. Cute. And yes, I went to AC Moore and bought the um, safety eyes. And again, she is brilliant. She has you knitting away and then she puts a, she makes you pearl where the eye is going to go. She's a genius. Look at these ears. I know. And so wait, can you tell me more about the safety eyes? What makes them safety eyes? Okay. I can show you. Well, oh. If you ever saw what's going on here, <laughs> so bad. I'm getting, we're getting our sink for my new dye room. So the room is a mess. So these are the safety eyes. Mm -hmm. 
So you push in the black part yep. and then you slam this plastic round thing that kind of grips it. It's, it, it's hard. Like you really got to do this and it works great. She also says you can take the, this white part and trace it and you can have felt around it. And then the eye like to have the white of an eye. I love the simple black eye. Me too. So now they're safety eyes because you can't get them undone. No, it's a, you like you squish them in there and the teeth like grab it. Uh, there's no way it's not going anywhere. That is so cool. Oh, it's brilliant. So I'm going to tell you the basic construction because people are like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You make the four legs and you dangle them on. I put them on a circular needle, just hung them. Yeah. And then you make the ears, you add, you hang them. Mm -hmm. So there's like live stitches. And then you so cleverly start knitting and she tells you where to then add the first set of legs, keep knitting, add the second part. It's brilliant. Oh my God, it's so cute. I feel like I did something wrong here because in the picture it's longer. I think I may have been like, oh, I think I'm done and stopped. <laughs> it's still so cute. You wouldn't even know. It's so freaking cute. I want them everywhere. I, I could see you with like a shelf in your office, had just having them lined up all different colors. I love it. Okay, enough of that. So cute. So that's, that's my like, I have been knitting like a fiend. Sorry, I'm dropping. Okay. Um, I have one more baby thing. Well, I have a lot more, but I can't share. But I have one that I can share because you know about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that you had gotten that far. I know. I stopped. Oh, my God. Susan B. Anderson's, again, super clever construction. I love, and I might be not correct about this, but I feel like it was a, um, like a, a new thing for stuffies is to make them all so you don't have to sew on every little piece. Yeah. Um, I did her original giraffe where you sewed on, which I made a bunch of those. <gasps> They're fantastic. But you had to sew on the arms, sew on the legs. But then I made that elephant that I gave you a long time ago. Oh, I have it right here. Yeah. And that taught me how to, oh my gosh, he's adorable. <laughs> I love him. He has no eyes. That taught me how to, uh, add the arms and legs by picking up stitches. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with Susan B. Anderson's other giraffe doing that on my own, like realizing how to do it and creating that look. Now I feel like the stuffies are incorporating them all. So, okay, so this is the giraffe and I'll show you what he looks like. I can't remember if I showed this last time or not. I don't think, so. oh, actually, you know what? You might've, but I would show it again anyway because now people know what it's, for. Yeah, it was out of the making book. It's so cute. It's in the making book, which is terrific. A lot of people have done reviews on this book. It's terrific. Mm -hmm. So I'm making that. It's so cute. And where did you get the yarn? The and yarn from that, that was Neato, and that's Quince & Co. Worsted, which is Lark. I never know. I wish they would just write what it is on the labels. I have such a hard time decoding there. Well, they probably do, but I, you know what I do? I wind yarn. I throw out the labels. I can't be bothered with keeping them. Do you want to know what the, what like a solution to that is? You're not going to like, but my Ravelry page is the reason that I can throw, throw out the label. I know. I'm going to work on that. Even if that's all you do, even if you don't put pictures or anything, even if it's just like you type in the name of the project and then you type in the yarn, that way you don't forget it. That's a good, I should, I should. I am really working on getting um, a little more organized with the shifting in the office and everything we have coming up. So anyways, I've been talking forever. What are you making? Oh, well, first, I guess we should kind of keep going with the baby thing because I have yarn to start a baby sweater, but I wanted to get you guys involved because I'm kind of open to suggestions for patterns. Um, I kind of kind of, what I got the, this yarn when you got your yarn at must love yarn, 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 yarn. Um, it's Plymouth select worsted Merino superwash. And 
It's color 68. They don't have names. It's super soft. Um, My favorite Plymouth yarns. It's, it's like, I want to make a sweater out of this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. It's so soft. So, but I don't have any ideas on patterns. So if anybody has an idea or like a suggestion, like your favorite baby sweater to knit or baby hat, I have two skeins. Um, so I have a feeling I'll have enough to probably do a sweater and a hat, maybe. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Yeah. So, and then like what mom's going to do when, it, when we do find out, we'll pick out pretty either pink buttons or orange buttons or green buttons to complement the earthy tone. Love the earthy tones. Me too. I kind of just, I love it. The other thing that um, I think is important, and our friend Maureen shared this with me because her, all her girls who happen to watch our podcast. Hi, guys. Um, like she knits for all her grandbabies. Oh my gosh, amazing. And they have certain sweaters that are their favorite as far as easy on, easy off. And this is, this is not, this is one I made a long time ago and I've never finished. And it's this pattern that is their favorite. And do I know what it is? No. That's okay. But it, it does the, and it's really big. I'll probably end up putting it away for someone. Um, but it, the way it crosses over and buttons down here, they like it as far as, I think it's like, you know, how babies can have larger heads and just the easy on and off, not up to here, like on their neck. So they're super comfortable. So it is a great question for people who do have little ones that they knit for. Like, what's the easiest one that you find to get on and off? And do you prefer a cardigan over a, um, what do you call the other thing? A pullover? pullover. Yes. Pullover. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so if any suggestions, throw them in the down bar um, and I'll go over and take a look at all of the suggestions and kind of see. And I think I'm going to probably lean towards newborn sizes, like probably small, small. Um, not that, I mean, if that changes your suggestions or not, but so yeah, that's, I think that's the last baby thing we have to talk about. But, um, but otherwise, I really have been devoting a lot of my knitting time to the test knit that I'm doing right now. So I don't have a ton. Um, but I do have a half finished object in the form of a sock that I can show. Um, so I finished this yesterday because I needed kind of the test knit's pretty big right now. So I need to I needed something a little more travel friendly. So I grabbed a sock and I finished it. It was already I had already started decreasing the toe so I really didn't do a lot on it like I was already like up to here so I finished that I finished it <laughs> I was like you know what I'm gonna let that part off it's something to show <laughs> so this is nitpicks felici and they just had another um release of felici I think and I noticed I just noticed on Instagram a lot of people had gotten it I know. I keep seeing those posts and I keep being like, Chelsea, don't look. Chelsea, don't look. Chelsea, don't look. But I'm going to go. I think Felici could make an adorable baby sweater. I agree. This is the um, saltwater taffy colorway. And this is what the skein looks like. I feel like it's getting blown out a little bit. Not too bad. There it is. So I really liked, I don't know, I'm not typically like a pink and purple kind of girl, but I really liked how there was like orange and the teal thought it complemented it nicely so I love it it was fun I used my uh, signature needles I did so I US uh, size US zero signature double points which I love but they do make a very tight material and these I definitely am gonna have to soak and re-put back on here because they are I think honestly I just made them too short because my toes are like this <laughs> <laughs> look like I have a claw foot <laughs> Um, so I'm going to definitely block these out, but, um, yeah, it makes a really nice tight fabric. Like I'm not worried about these falling down my leg or anything. Um, and I think they'll look really cute with my blundstones in the fall, like peeking out of my boots. Um, so yeah. And I did my normal, well, I shouldn't say my normal cause I kind of do 50, 50 fish lips, kiss heel to drop heel. Um, but I did a, a normal drop heel. Love it. Just a vanilla sock. So. Perfect. What about you? 
uh, other than baby. I have not had a lot of good sock mojo going, but I'm brioching. Yes, you are. It's, it's going really well, except for today. When I blow the increases, it's when I have to tink back. I, I'm so mad at myself because I can't get past this stupid color. I'm honestly so impressed that you can tink back. Oh, I have to because I, okay. So this doesn't look super big because I had it started and there was the teal here. Yes. And I pulled the entire thing back. I knit this almost probably to here in one day. Yeah. I was on fire and I was doing so well and I love it and I'm loving the knit. And then I made a mistake this afternoon and I so today was kind of like knit like it's your job day. And I wasted so much time. It's so frustrating when that happens. It's just frustrating. And, but I hit this point where I thought, oh my God, what if it's like, what if I can't fix it? Like, what if I, I went that route? Then I was like looking at like screaming at the top of my lungs, throwing it in the pool and jumping off the roof <laughs> all at once. Just a flash. Just a, whoa, something just went really wrong down there. <laughs> so. Uh, there. It's only six o'clock. I know. <sighs> oh, thank God. So anyways, I... I love this knit. I'm just, I think it didn't help that I had a really bad headache today, which I have not had a really bad headache in a long time. And really, Sue, like, why are you brioching when you have a really bad headache? What about that makes sense to you? Nothing. But it's fun. It is. And I, I was on a roll. And the thing is, when you're on a roll with brioche, you're on a roll. But when you hit a snag, you hit a snag. Are you keeping like tack marks? Are you like checking off the roses? Yeah. I have this little thing where like I have section one, section two with all the section one, section two. And then that darn row 13 and 14 where I got messed up. Mm -hmm. So I think I tinked back. I think I have to do the 13s and the 14s now. I just... It, if you get sloppy for one second with brioche, it's all over. I know. Having said that, I love it. I love it. So this is using our meandering minis mm -hmm. and our um, Grey Garden, mm -hmm. which, yes, I had to stick with Grey Garden. I love that name. And the minute I was like, it's Grey Garden. I saw a million Grey Gardens on Instagram. How does that happen? It's just sometimes the universe works that way. It does. It's literally like, really? I thought I just like came up with that name and yeah. no, and it, it's hysterical, but I thought, you know what? That's crazy. It's gray garden. I love it. I love the, the movie gray garden. So, so it's, I'm going to show you all the pieces. So it's my gray, our gray, which is a charcoal gray. And then it is this. I have to find them all. I probably threw a few around earlier. <laughs> Out of frustration. Like, bingo, that one's gone. Oh, see, one of them's missing. Uh-oh. The teal? Yeah, the teal one. Okay, well, these are some of them. So pretty. I love the orangey feel. I do, too. And then this one. Ooh. Where is the teal one? It's got to be here. Would it be, where were you knitting earlier? I got it. It's just behind. And you had to see it because I love it. I do. So that, like, this is the color that's coming up next. Oh. So if you are interested, I do think I'm going to put a bunch of these kits in again next week. I put a bunch in a couple weeks ago. So you get a full skein of gray and then a set of five minis. I can't remember the price. It's probably, oh, if you go over and look, you'll see. So yeah, I love it. So pretty. So I'm hoping I at least have to go back the one row because I have 
the starting is on both sides and they both have to be on the same side. So I am going to do that. And then I'm going to see how my head is, like how my head space is and decide if I'll go on tonight. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's annoying. It's, it's tough. It's like until, I don't, I, I was even at that point where I'm barely even looking at the directions. Like I know, I understand where the increases go. The only thing I don't know is the initial jag. Like that's the row I'd always have to look at. Yep. I know it all. I just got a the minute I get overconfident, it's gone. <laughs> Dang, it's okay. It'll you'll fall back into it. I will. You will. And I, having said that, it does not seem like I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's beautiful. I cannot wait to see that thing finished. It's I'm really happy with it. And really, it's perfect. It is perfect. Like, I honestly cannot believe that you know how to pull. Like, for me, I couldn't pull back because I wouldn't know how to pick the stitches back up. Oh, no, no. You don't pull back. You do each stitch. Tink back. How long did it take you? A very a total waste of time. I know. It's okay. I'm over it. My head still hurts, though. I am at that point. Like, I've had to do that a couple of times with the times with the test knit and every time I'm just like oh it's hard because you can't help but feel like the time that you've wasted but I will tell you every time I pull back every time I start over I understand it more and more and more so there really is a lot of value in it it's still not fun it's not because I want to knit it like blindfolded. Like I'm not used to having to concentrate so much on knitting. Mm -hmm. I'm really not like I was talking to Andy. I'm like, if I have to pull back generally, I just whip that needle out, pull it back, put it back in. I know what row I'm on, no matter what. It is not the case. You're in a totally different arena with brioche. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. But I'm thrilled. I am thrilled that I know how to brioche again. Yes. And it I came right back. It came right back. Yeah. And like you said, with all the pulling back and everything, the more you do it, the better, the more of a rhythm you're going to find. Well, so then on Sunday, I pulled it out because I made such a monumental error. There was no hope. And I had pulled the needles out. I pulled it all the way back and then I tried to restart it. This is now Sunday night at nine o'clock. Really, Sue, just put it down. Give when, the yarn a break. When you sent me that text message, I didn't believe you. I was like, there's no, because you were like, it looked like you were almost halfway through that shawl. I just had sent you a picture of this fantastically gorgeous piece and I, it's like, I ripped it out. I didn't believe but, it. Then I woke up the next morning and I really thought, I'm done. I'm not making this. Sorry, I'm not making it anymore. Never mind. I woke up the next morning. I had my head on straight. I just whipped through it. So it's really, for me, I have to know myself well enough when to put it down. And I'm afraid that is going to be now and I'm not ready to put it down. So you're at 13 and 14 now? I don't know. I think so. I think, no, I think I'm on the very last row of the first round of section two, and then I'll go to 13, 14. What if you just take it one row at a time? What if you just say like, when you sit down, okay, my only goal right now, I'm going to get my B color over to the other side so that at least they're both at the same side and then see how that row feels and then go, okay, now I'm just going to do one more row and then I'm going to put it down. Like, instead of looking at it as like, I have two hours to brioche. Like, no, I'm just going to get it to a point where, where I understand. I agree with you. And I wish, like, I do that. But then I make a mistake and go, great. I pushed it that one row too far. Oh, oh it's bad. Dang it. Bad. You'll it's, okay. it's knitting. It's knitting. The headache isn't helping. No, you need to get that headache to go away first. Yeah. I think I'll just get all colors onto the same side and then see i don't know what else i want to knit on i'm at this really weird knitting place where 
nothing is like whoa for me. Yeah. What about, so this actually is kind of a good segue because I was going to just start talking about um, the Westnitz fade along. So I don't know if you've seen any of his Instagram posts or anything, but he is doing this. I think, I think he does have a Ravelry page, which I will put in our uh, show notes. I'm pretty sure you just pick any of his patterns and fade it. Yes. So what I was thinking, because I am itching to have one of his garter, just, I don't even know which one. I just want a garter shawl on my freaking needles right now. I'm dying for it. Because it's mindless. It's mindless. And I feel like you would have so much fun because it's the same color play, but it's like every garter shawl that I've knit by him, you can't get enough of it. And it's, it's, it's potato chip knitting and it's movie knitting and it's, you're still, but it, you're still engaged in that creative piece because you're playing with color. Well, see, and I have to tell you, I usually feel that way about socks, but right now I'm not, none of my socks are like, whoa, they're so relaxed. I don't know why. One of them, the needle, it's got like a burr in it, like where the cord joins and it's one of my high highs and it's really annoying me. Is it an interchangeable? No. Oh, that's surprising. It's like, it's like the cord is messed up. So that's bugging me. Dang it. I know. I'm just, it's not good. It's all good. We have nothing to complain about. But that's a suggestion of something that you could cast on. And like, I like it. Like, you know, his garter goodness I have that turns into a vest. Like that's a, that is. I love that one. If you, I wish I could cast it on for you and just have it there. That way you don't have to even have motivation to do it. But like you would be obsessively knitting that shawl. Maybe I'll look at that. That is a good suggestion because I'm just out of sorts with my knitting. Nothing is grabbing me. Nothing is, it's just not happening. I don't know why. I, I, I know exactly where you are because I've been there. So I, I get it. Well, it's and I thought I had overcome it with this gorgeous Brio shawl because I was in the rhythm and then ugh, out of rhythm. Darn it. Oh, it's all right. Oh, well, I think I'm going to cast on one of those, one of his garter shawls. I don't know which one. I'm going to find one probably in that book that, that we bought. Um, and I'm going to fade along with him. That sounds very fun. Did you watch his videos? Not yet. I have, I, he posted a video on Instagram today, which was so cute because they always are. Um, but I haven't gone right as we were starting to like talk. I was on YouTube a little bit. Um, and I saw that he has one from yesterday. So I need to go on and watch. Yeah. Is it like a music video like he normally does or is it? Oh, no, I was a little disappointed. One of them is, and one of them is just him chatting, which oh. was, they're both really good. They're just, I was looking for that insane. One of them is close. Yeah. It's close. I'll need to watch. I know. So, yeah. I have one more thing that I'm working on that I could show. It's not anything super exciting, but like after I finished uh, my sock, I had, well, why would I cast on the second sock when I could cast on a totally different Felici sock? That's what I would do. <laughs> so I cast on, I haven't gotten super far. These are my needles and holy crap, are they sharp? So dangerous. When you have a little one rocking around, those are not going to be out and about. I know. I'm going to have to really have protectors, but even they the probably need a license to carry. No. <laughs> Um, this morning I was knitting in bed a little bit and I leaned over to give Romo a kiss and Justin's hand was on him. He goes, Oh my God. <laughs> I him. Yeah. They're oh. deadly. They're weapons. Are. But this is, so this is another, uh, nitpicks Felici. That Those I are gorgeous. Thank you. It is the toucan colorway. So that's what this I love it. Lo oh my gosh. I love it. Pretty fun. Very fun. So, and that was just, again, I needed travel knitting uh, just for this morning with all these doc. Oh, no. Uh oh. With doctor's appointments and stuff, now with like the baby and everything, I need projects that can travel better than big shawls and all of that. So, I have a feeling I will be sock knitting a little bit more than I normally. That's a good thing. 
Or baby knitting. Now baby knitting, probably. But Yeah, because that's kind of small, depending on what you're making, too. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So that's the only other thing that I've been knitting on. Nothing. And I did a two-by-two two twisted rib, which I always start twisted rib, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be so pretty. And then I get, like, this way through, and I'm like, I hate this. It I know. It's so, so worth it, though. It is. I do really, really like the look of a twisted rib. I do. Did Justin finish those opal socks? How far are you in your opal socks? We need to show those because I think they're my favorite. Yeah, he picked out a killer skein of yarn. Killer. Almost at the toe? Almost at the toe, he said. <gasps> oh, I love that yarn. It's so, so freaking pretty. And his... What's that? Is it one of their new colorways? I don't think so. It didn't. Oh, I have the label right here. This was the label for it. And did Must Love Yarn have that? Yeah. Yep. I should have looked at their opal selection. They have great sock yarn selection, especially self striping like this. He can always find great stuff there. I know. And it's so funny. We walk in and we get talking and we don't shop. I know. I know. Unless we're usually looking for something specific. We don't wander is what I should say. I know. And we really should do that more often. That I love. Isn't it great? And I just feel like his knitting is so like, his gauge is so consistent that it look, it even it like makes the yarn pop even more. Yeah. He needs to start making baby socks we have to put, or baby hats. Baby. We need to get him on that. We need more knitters there, Justy. I know. Just saying. He's standing right here. He won't go in the front of the camera. Oh, the father to be should make an appearance. Make an appearance. Just like say hello. Okay. I can always cut it out. Next time. Next time. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here he comes, everybody. Oh, yay. <laughs> the daddy to be. <laughs> down. You're ahead, Justin. You. <laughs> All right. That's enough. <laughs> All right, you can have your socks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Good you. job. Um, so just for anybody that is curious about that colorway, this is the band. So you'll know kind of like what to look for. And it says. I know. Does Opal give colorways? I never know. No, they just have numbers. So I'm going to show you guys this on this on the screen. So hopefully you have. a. It makes me want to knit with Opal. I lo I'm an Opal lover. I've always loved opal it's probably one of my first sock yarns i used me too well for me so i knit justin the very first pair that i knit out of Patton's croy and then the second pair that i knit for myself was opal yeah it's just a workhorse yarn and gorgeous mm -hmm. i wish i could get my hands on the harry potter colorways <sighs> i would actually almost kill for that not really maybe a bug <laughs> you can't go to jail at this point it's true. I'm needed in the world again. <laughs> okay, let's talk about um, the gypsy moths have become moths. What does that mean? Like the gypsy moth caterpillars? Yeah. Do you have moths everywhere? Outside. Oh. They're not the yarn-eating moths, so I'm not worried. But they're gross. We, well, I'll tell the story about the people that came and sprayed our house for gypsy moths and something else. I know. We didn't order it. They thought we were the neighbors. <laughs> so Dad's in his office and he sees this truck and he's like, so Jacob, what's going on? He goes, I don't know. So he goes down and the guy's like, yeah, I'm here to spray for gypsy moss and blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm three quarters of the way done. And dad was like, I think you have the wrong house. <laughs> they so, so we lucked out because if they hadn't come, we would be probably, you wouldn't be able to see me right now. I'd be covered. That's how many caterpillars we used to have. Holy guacamole. They're gross. It's all right. We're having a pretty creature free summer. That's I'm pretty happy about it. That is really, really good because that means you get to enjoy the pool stress free. And I have been by myself even. I'm so proud of you. I know. Uh, I can, sh so I'm, I think I'm done with my knitting stuff. Are you done with knitting stuff? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, I have a fun thing that I bought today. Justin and I went down to church street cause it was beautiful out. 
Um, it's not yarn related. It's all right. kind of knitter related. But I went into David's Tea for the very first time because if I can't have coffee, I'm going to go get some really fun non-caffeinated tea. So they had these bad boys on sale, which I thought was really cool. So cool. It locks. Oh. I wish I knew how to work it. <laughs> oh, I have to unlock it and then pops open. And then there's like a little like thing where you put the loose leaf tea in here. Oh, Sophia had some of these, I think. I'm so excited about it. And and the woman, the, can I say the salespeople at David's Tea are one, so knowledgeable and two, so nice. Like she was so sweet. She was like, oh yeah, these are on sale. Like, and she kind of discombobulated it for me and kind of, cause I had never been to David's Tea before. Um, but she was saying because it locks and then if you see here, there's like a little switch where it actually like locks this so you can't open it. She was like, you can just throw it in a bag with whatever you want and it won't leak and this. Wow. And so they found tea because I know like there's so many ingredients that you can't have. Yeah. I'm surprised okay. they don't have like a pregnancy tea. I, they might, I didn't look on their website. It seemed like they were out of quite a few uh, tins on their wall. I, I, I'm guessing they probably had a busy weekend last weekend with the holiday. And right. then too. Um, but I was able to find things with uh, ingredients that I could, that I could eat, eat, drink, drink. Um, and it was so cool. It was like whenever you got a four, uh, whenever you got four ounces of loose leaf tea, you got this tin for free, which it's typically, I think, an extra charge, she said. And I got to have fun. Yeah. So I got Midsummer's Night Dream. I got four ounces of that. Um, which is apple, spearmint, gooseberries, marigold, rose petals. And then Ooh, that sounds delicious. Uh, I, oh, I wish you could smell it. She, so they'll take the tins down for you and you can smell them. It smells like candy. Like, like, oh my God, it makes me salivate. Like oh, <laughs> Jolly Ranchers. And, Heaven. Oh my God. So good. And then I got a uh, one ounce of melon drop which is Ooh. honeydew melon, papaya, watermelon, kiwi. And they're both caffeine free. And I actually haven't smelled this one yet, but I'm going so, to oh, Can you make it iced tea too? Yeah. And they have instructions on how to do that. Well, they did. They have it online. Very fun. It's as easy as like, I think you just put a little more tea leaf in there when you're actually steeping it and then you chill it. Yeah. Oh my God. I told That's so fun because definitely for you to not have coffee is huge. So it's so nice that you can replace it with a special treat. Then that was kind of my goal today. Like give myself something. Yeah. And I, I have been a hundred percent caffeine free since the day after I found out that I was pregnant. So, and I will say that first day, Felt like I was going through the most severe withdrawal symptoms that you could possibly have. It was horrendous. I know. I know. But, but I feel wonderful now. Like I don't, I don't even really crave coffee. Like the taste of it does nothing for me right now. And I don't know if that's like the pregnancy thing with the chemicals or whatever, but, um, yeah, like I don't even like just like, we'll go get coffee a lot in the morning and I'll say, like, do you want a decaf? And Sometimes I say yes and I take a few sips and then it ends up in the garbage. Like it just doesn't. Doesn't do it for you. Yeah. I just think it's hysterical because he did not drink coffee when he lived here. I know. So he went from zero to a hundred million miles an hour. He went right to espresso. Is that what I want to call them? Double shots. Yeah. I know. That, he was, that was probably um, very poor influence. We were very poor. I do not drink coffee, but you know, dad does and Ben and Jacob, all of us were pretty they, like they corrupted him. I know. He always says next, that he says we ruined him. Yeah. Ruined him. Next. He's going to start eating mushrooms and then it's over. He has headphones and he can hear you. Um, he's had it on pizza before and not realized. I, we will talk about that if that comes, because that's not going to happen. It's a much more serious offense. That's much more serious.
So that's exciting. So you were able to get yourself a special little treat. Yes. Yes. I fun. Yes. Yeah, so that's another thing. And then I do have a book that I started. I don't know if you have any other like recommendations or anything that you have. I don't. I'm on not a good reading kick and I'm, I'm really struggling with it because it's summer and I love to read in the summer. It would probably help if I would get myself to a bookstore. Um, Sophia had a few suggestions for me. I downloaded one last night. I do not know the name of it. It's by the woman that wrote The Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood. Oh. It's part of a trilogy. I'm. It's dystopian. I don't know if I'm dystopian out with The Handmaid's Tale. Could mm -hmm. be. Not sure. But so far, I like it. I don't know what it's called. You'll have to tell me when we're done recording, and I'll put it on the screen, because I'm actually curious to know. I can tell you. I'll look it up. It's on my Kindle, okay. which is also on my iPad. Um, I think it's going to be good. I am in the mood to read, mm -hmm. but the tour is on right now, and we all know what that means in our house. Mm -hmm. Biking, biking, biking. And I do enjoy the tour. Every year I'm going to do the tour to Fleece. Nope, I'm not. I haven't. Okay, it's called Oryx and Crake. Interesting. O R Y X and Crake. C R A K E. It's the Mad Adam trilogy book one. It came very highly recommended. I'll have to recommend that to Justin. I feel like that's something that would be right up his alley. Yes, I actually told Dad about it too because he definitely is not one to look for a book. I always find books for him and I really do know what he likes to read, so he typically enjoys what I find. Um, I, I'm dying for a good book. Okay, what are you reading? I know. I wish that I had anything new to share with you, but you always share your books with me. I know. I started Eleanor and Park, um, which I know you read because I'm pretty sure you're the reason I have it on my list. Um, I'm about halfway through. I read half the book yesterday in like a couple of hours. It's one of those where it's... It's super cool. The chapters are, it's, so there are two characters, Eleanor and Park. And it's my favorite. One or two characters is about all I can handle. And then of course there's like supporting characters, but really only like a handful enough so that like, you know exactly who everyone is. It is a young adult novel. Um, favorite. It's because they're just mature enough to not make you feel like you're reading something that an eighth grader would also read. Not that I would care either way, but it, I, love kids books and young adult I love them you know what I want to reread right now I'm dying to get it Harriet the Spy Ooh, that's a good one why well, I don't even remember all I remember is she wrote down everything it was one of my favorite books I can still feel it in my hands but tell me Eleanor and Park is a famous author and I can't remember Ooh. it's somebody pretty famous I think I don't know, and I'm afraid to go back. And that's like, okay because I just I don't really know how to actually. Hang on. I feel like it's it's a it's an unusual name. Oh, I think I can do this. Just remember that I'm on chapter thirty-three. X-ray. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, rainbow. Why do I want to say like rainbow or I don't know how to get back to it. It's but, okay. But I will, I'll put it on the screen and I'll put it in the Yeah, screen. People are going to, there. people are screaming at us right now. Probably. Yeah. I loved that book though. It is, it's so good. And like the characters, you just fall in love with them instantly. It's, it's so good. I highly, highly recommend it. It's a quick read. And like, it's so funny because I either read a hundred percent like n like I'll read a book in two days or I don't read it all so when because Justin and I took this whole week off for like a state a summer staycation uh, so and what's that it's so fun it's been great and like and I decided that I wanted to read a book because it's summer and we're just enjoying some downtime and I'm so glad I picked this one um and I do have a Kindle like you and I Love it. Somebody commented, I don't remember who it was exactly, on the post that I posted on Instagram asking if I liked the Kindle. 
Um, I love my Kindle. See, and I don't have a Kindle. I only have the iPad. I want a Kindle Paperwhite so bad. I'm ridiculous. I really could afford to buy one. They're not expensive. And I just keep putting it off. I, I really, really, really want a book. I'm craving holding a book. I should go tonight. Go tonight. It's beautiful. I almost went to the library today. Ooh. I almost went to the library to get this book that I downloaded because I really want to hold it, but I spent $10 to download it, so it's kind of crazy to then go buy it. But I'm pretty sure the library would have it. Maybe they're open tonight. I don't know. They might be. I feel like I remember as a kid going to Rockville Public Library at night in the summer. It is gorgeous now. It is the most gorgeous library. I should go there all the time. Why don't I? Oh. I'm lazy with a capital L. Well, you know, it's easy. I feel like with all of the conveniences of like technology and. That's the thing. Last night I was like, I'll just download it. But it doesn't, uh, there's something about reading on a device lately that is just, uh, it's not engaging me. I'm, I'm like, it's like I'm shut down to it. It's very weird. Well, I also do feel like. I go in phases with that, but I do feel like because this day and age, it's like the screen era, like literally if we're not looking at a screen, we're not doing something productive, or at least that's the way it feels. I'm, it's funny because I have been so technologyed out lately. Like I really don't even want to be on my phone. I d even texting lately. I'm like, Oh, that just takes so much time. I'm terrible. Here, and I don't know if it's just I want to just shut down for a while. And it is. I mean, our business is run through the Internet. So I, it's probably that, too, that it connects me to work. Like, I feel like it's work, which I love my work, but it's work and you have to take a break from it. So I don't know. Yeah, I will say Kindles, um, I do find they're a little bit different because you, well, at least the version that I have, like you can connect to the Internet, but it's not like it's not the Internet that we have through our phones and our screens and everything. It's very different. Um, and Justin got me, I forget if it was for Christmas or birthday or what, but he got me this really cool case for it. Um, and then I keep a list of like recommended books always. Cause if I'm just like, I need to read. I should, I should just order a paperweight. Yeah. Well, because there's no back screen there's, or there's no backlight to it. There's no nothing. Like if I want to read at night, I still have to pop this open and then I have a light. Like it's That's what I need because I do read at night and that is one thing. Dad is the easiest person in the world, but he hates a light on when he's trying to sleep. He, he, you can just tell, he's like, no, it's no big deal. And I can just tell it interrupts his sleep. So I don't like to have one on if he's sleeping, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. For me, it's nice because I don't like having a lot of books. Like it just, Books feel like clutter to me, just to me personally. I know it's not like that for a lot of people, but I just find like when I'm done reading a book, I'm never going to pick it back up again. I know I'm not going to. But the thing that I miss the most about having books is saying to someone, this is the greatest book, take it. Like I would, I would hand them off and say, I don't need it back. Like I, I, I remember when I first started reading electronically, which was a very long time ago, um, that was the first thing I missed was, first of all, knowing the title of the book, because I never saw the cover, so I had no idea what it was called, and then being able to say to someone, here, take it, you know, it's a great book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, there are definitely pros and cons to both, but it's, it's totally. See, and I have to say, my problem is reading on, I don't even read on the iPad because it's heavy, and if I fall asleep, it could break my nose, so I have to read on my phone. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, I'll just scoot over to Instagram for a minute. It's so, I'm so distracted by my phone. I think that's a huge piece of it. Like, oh, I just check my mail. Really? It's not that important. So yeah. Okay. That's it. So we talked books. Yeah. Oh, and there's another book that I'm going to download when I'm done with this one. Um, I saw our friend, uh, Jess Gale is reading it right now. Outliers. I'm pretty sure you've read it or maybe I've not. heard of it. It's like a white cover. It looks like there's a marble on the cover of it. It looks like I, she's flying through it. So I think that'll be the next one. I don't think I've read it, but I think I'm familiar with it. 
she always had the best taste in books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like she inspires me a lot by, like, I love when she posts when she's reading certain books because I'm always like, ooh, put it on the list, and then I'll write it down on the inside of my Kindle. Well, you have dinner plans, which is so fun. Yeah. We're going to go out and have a nice, like, date night just for, like, staycation, go out and enjoy. We do have a new website to go to when you go to purchase our yarn. Um, so instead of going through Etsy, which you still can go through Etsy if you'd like, um, we're not moving shops, um, but we do have a, an easier way to get to that shop and kind of a prettier front end. Um, so we are at now www.legacyfiberarts.com, and I'll put it on the screen. Um, it's just a little bit easier, I think, to navigate for, for us, for you guys. Um, yes, but the checkout process is the same. Everything's the same. So there's no big change. It's more the presentation, mm -hmm. if yep. I'm understanding it correctly. Yep. And just like the ability, when you search for us now, uh, on Google, our website will come up instead of having to like go to Etsy and search. And it's just a little more search engine friendly. Yeah, everyone talks about that is the one downfall of Etsy is their search engine is not good. I don't know why, but it's not. So this will make it easier. Definitely. So yeah. yeah, and we I'm trying to think what we have coming up. We have Skein of Thrones, which will be next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and it will coincide with the premiere start of the new season. So we will put up on Etsy. It will maybe be Friday night. We'll, yeah, we'll update Instagram when we figure that out. But yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. Did I say Etsy? I meant Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we'll post it on Instagram when that is going to be. It's the final, final installation of the club. The club has been so much fun um, to do the colorways and you know, I've talked about it before, a little stressful because we go in it blind. Mm -hmm. And then between you and Justin and Jacob, I get all the input and a couple of Jacob's friends now when they're over, if they see me scanning up some of it there, I'll be like, well, this might be the next one. Give me some thoughts. And um, I, we went back and we're starting to watch last season. You know what? I want to love that show so much and I don't. That's okay. I want you so badly. I've tried so many times. It's just so hard for me to watch. It's brutal. Just as far as like, um, <laughs> like gore factor, yeah, gore factor. And then you don't even have to be looking and you know, because of the sound effects, you know, that arm just went flying off into someone's head. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's blood squirting. You know it. I know. So anyways, but it was a fantastic club. It was so exciting. Thank you to all who were involved in it with us. It was, it was terrific. Yeah. Terrific. It was super and I have cool. no clue what the final's going to be yet. Yeah. We haven't really talked about it too much. No. But, well, but it'll be fun. I, I, so yeah, it's been really fun and we have a lot of, we have all the holidays coming up, which we'll all have um yarn to go with them we haven't made those decisions yet those are huge oh. decisions uh oh. that we need to chat about and i cannot wait to start dying those me and let's talk about it we are one year old almost our fiber business when i believe july i don't know why like 29th maybe was our first etsy update and it was hocus pocus Oh. I know that was a year ago. It was the hottest, hottest week of the summer when we decided to start this business. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back on YouTube and look and see which episode, because I know exactly which episode it was. I just don't remember the date. And then we'll, yeah. that is so funny. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love, I, ugh, I love fall more than anything in this whole entire world. And I'm, people are going to hate me for saying this. I'm already counting down till September like it's only a month and a half until September I know that scares me because we have a lot a lot a lot going on we have so much coming up we have a lot of which we can't share yet but when we do unbelievably exciting news 
for the business um, of some upcoming events that are going to be fantastic. They're going to be awesome. And we're super excited about it. And, and I think that's another reason why, like, I'm so, I just like, I cannot, fall cannot get here fast enough. And I do not want to wish away time, but like, I am so not into summer at all. I'm not. I, you know, I'm fall. kind of loving summer. I'm I think loving it. I think a lot of, like, almost everybody else is in that boat. I don't know. For some reason, I am just, I want fall. Yeah, I I want it, but there has got to be so much work done. Between now and then. That I'm like, whoa, no, I can't go too fast because there's so much preparing and all super fun things to do. Like, cannot wait to share with the world what those things are. Um, It'll probably be next podcast, I would say. I, I feel like we should be able to share some within the next couple weeks um, of things that we're trying to firm up and do. And it's all good. So, yeah, I think that's You have a date. I have a date. What? I don't. Well, that's okay. It's okay. I have, a, I have to brioche. At least one row. That might be it. Brioche one row and then go on Ravelry onto Stephen West's page and get inspired. And get inspired. Or make another baby sweater. Or do that. That would be fine, too. I know. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up or head down and subscribe to our channel. We are pretty consistent with the every two weeks. Um, we have been so good lately. I'm impressed by us. Yeah, we've been pretty good. Now that we said that, you won't see us for a month. I know. No, <laughs> we are on this. We are good. It's it, We seem to have fallen into a groove with it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, yeah, yeah, feel free to uh, give us a like or subscribe. Um, and if you'd like, you'll see at the end of the podcast where you can find us on the social medias and how to contact us via email. Um yeah, but other than that, check out the new website. Yeah, check out the new website. It's pretty simple. It's easy to navigate. Um, there's nothing in there right now, but that will change hopefully in the near future. Yes, we should talk about keep your eyes on the website, have notifications on because we are trying to go to the die put in the shop, die put in the shop. We just haven't had any dying happening this week. We had to finish fulfilling a bunch of orders, but now that's done. Yes, exactly. So, so yeah, thank you again, everybody. We hope you have a great week um, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye, everybody.